Yeah, I, I see like Joseph's story. One, you had a dream, but he, what's cool at the end of Joseph's story is he looks back and his brothers think, you're going to kill kill us. Yeah. And he's like, no, you don't understand. This was, looking back, he could see that that was the path the whole time, that God had put him down that path. I'm also impressed by how excellent he was in everything he did on that path. He wasn't like discouraged, yeah, which is just just beyond me. But also, you talked about the identity piece. I was just, I just was talking about this. I was a carpet cleaner, so I had failed a company and I cleaned carpets. Yeah, it was so difficult. If it wasn't, what is God's identity for you? And I'd love to know how you discovered that because it's tough to break out into something you've never done before if you feel like your identity is based on what's around you. Now that you have the studio and all of this, this this confirms who you are. You're like, I've made it. But when you have none of the studio, you still have to go out there and know who you are and know yeah. who you are in Christ. Yeah. And I was a carpet cleaner. It was so difficult, man. So I'd love to know what you did and, and what advice you give to people like that because I was like, I'm a carpet cleaner. Why would anyone buy a product from me if I try to sell things online? Yeah. Like I, my identity was wrapped up with the tag on my chest and not God, who do you say that I am? Yeah. Or, you know, also what's the balance of that delusion of I'm, I'm the best man. God says I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. And, and just having that internal confidence, knowing that, that I have a bigger identity than just even what I'm doing. And even for you, you have a bigger identity than, than the studio. Yeah. Right. You have an internal identity. So how did you, how did you end up finding that because transitioning careers can be tough whether someone's 50 or 23 yep your identity is wrapped up in one thing 100 percent. so you know i ended up um getting released and you know in kind of a dark place for a few weeks and then um i ended up getting another call from a, a different team and i didn't even want to play baseball anymore this wasn't an affiliated baseball with any of the major league teams and i was like i'm not going to go play for these teams and you know my fiance now wife and my mom and my dad encouraged me like you already trained the whole off season. You might as well go like just play. And if this is the last season, at least just go make it the last season. I was like, all right. So, you know, I ended up going out and playing that year and I played pretty well and, you know, I had fun and that led to four more seasons after that. But it was during that time I, I knew I was like, all right, I'm kind of just playing baseball for fun at this point. Like the odds of getting the bigs are not really there. So what am I going to do? You know, I got to provide for my wife. You know, we just got married now. And that led to my whole couch flipping story, you know, for those who don't know. And that was like kind of like the first big God moment where, you know, I'm, I get married. It's October of 2013. So I'm about to celebrate 10 years. And, you know, we'd furnished our whole apartment with all this furniture on Craigslist. We used the money from our wedding gifts to buy the furniture and get the apartment and all this stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at the furniture one day and I'm like, it just is like, God gave me a vision. He was like, you could just sell this and make money. And I was like, what? And I'm just looking at everything around me. And it's like the veil was revealed. And I was like, yeah, I did buy that for a hundred. I could probably sell that for three. And I'm like, that's more than I make substitute teaching. And like, that's easy and that's fun. I enjoy getting deals. So Long story short, you know, I, I ended up buying a couch and um, flipped it, made 200 bucks. I was like, dude, this is it. I'm just going to do this once a day, 200 bucks a day, 6,000 a month. Let's roll. That's exactly what happened. You know, I ended up starting this whole furniture business and, you know, I did that for a couple of years. And like, honestly, I thought I was balling. I was like, dude, I'm making eight grand a month. This is crazy. Nobody knows what this is. Like, yep. there was no YouTube or anything teaching this stuff. Like, I just had figured it out. I was like, this is great. But you know, it was a year later after that, you know, God is always kind of like making you take the next step of faith, right? So I could have been very content and been like, oh yeah, we're good. Like we're making eight grand a month. We have like, we live off nothing. We're very frugal. And I just remember like, we're celebrating our one year anniversary. And this was like my next, you know, as you would call them God moment where I was like, God, you know, it's been a year. I'm definitely a provider now. That's not something I was before, but I'm not going to do this the rest of my life. Like this isn't fulfilling. I know you've built me for way more than this. Like I have talent. I just don't know what to do. And then I just heard him whisper real estate. And I was like, real estate. I mean, this is 20, the end of 2014. I became a realtor in 2010. I had failed that entire time. I had already quit. And I was like, real estate. And then I was like, I don't get it. Well, 
literally like within the hour, I see a TV commercial. And it's like, you can start real estate investing today with no money and all this stuff. And I'm like, scam. I didn't even like look at it. I didn't even think about the sign. Do you remember who it was? It was one of the TV, you know, gurus yeah, and stuff. Yeah, one of the guys. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, man, this is like whatever. And the, But I couldn't shake it. I was like, yeah, there's no way that like that showed up, whatever, right? So I just Googled it. I'm like, can you buy real estate with no money? Like that never even occurred to me to like think of that. Sure enough, start seeing all these blogs and forums and I see this book and I read it like literally on our vacation. I was like, dang, you can actually do this. Like, it's not rocket science. Like, there's actually ways to go buy real estate without money. So I ended up um, getting on a plane, and my wife and I weren't sitting together because we were too cheap still to, like, pay for picking your seat. And so we were in different seats, and this old guy sits next to me. And, you know, he sees me reading my book. He goes, hey, what are you reading? I was like, well, I'm reading um, this book on real estate investing and flipping houses with no money. It's crazy. Dude, I People need to know this. Like in my mind, I'm like, this is crazy. This is the thing. And he's like, yeah, it is crazy. He's like, you know, I flipped hundreds of homes in my career and I've done those things. I was like, no way. And he's like, son, let me tell you something. And he just like leaned in. He's like, I don't usually talk to people on the plane, but I want you to know that God is telling you that you're going to be very successful in this and you're going to change a lot of lives. And I was like, like, I got just goosebumps. Wow. And he's like, I don't usually talk to people on planes and all this, but like God's calling me to encourage you on this and like to, to let you know that it's going to work out. And I was like, this is crazy. And so I told my wife when we got back, I was like, we're going to flip houses. I was like, but the only thing is like, we're going to, I need to max out all our credit cards. That's, <laughs> that's the catch because yeah. I don't have any money right now. And so we're going to have to get money from somewhere. There's other ways to get money, but this is the fastest. Yep. So, you know, she's like, all right, you know, <laughs> whatever, let's roll. So, you know, we max out the credit cards and, you know, we do the first deal and I made 25 grand and obviously there was a lot that went into that, but it ended up working out. And obviously that led to another deal and another deal. And now, you know, we flipped five or 600 homes. We've bought 500 plus rentals and I hated real estate. And so like to see that God brought it all full circle and honestly too, you know, as my life and my faith have evolved, and I've, I've gotten closer to being, you know, a better disciple, call it. Um, I now recognize like, man, that guy was giving me like a prophetic word. And that's not something I would have believed growing up, especially like in the Baptist church where, you know, they don't talk about the Holy Spirit a ton and they don't, you know, talk about gifts and miracles and healings and prophecy and all these things. And I, like now I look back on it and I'm like, Dude, that guy literally like was giving me the word I needed. 